Hello and welcome to Wrestling in Mom's Basement. This is going to be the review for TLC 2018. I, of course, am Patrick Young. This gentleman to my right is my co-host, Joe Venuto. Uh, TLC 2018 kicked off on a kickoff with the Cruiserweight Championship match by Murphy defeating Cedric Alexander. Uh, yeah, I thought the Cruiserweights did very well in showing what they could on the kickoff. I, I would like to see it on the main show, but... It, it's the cruise weights, and they they really don't get much time if there's a match, uh, a pay per view full of matches. Uh, so I I did enjoy Murphy and Cedric's work. I thought they did very well together, and I thought they were the excellent kickoff to the rest of the show. Yeah, I suspect that this was a great open with both guys delivering as they have all of 2018. Uh, they delivered non banger, and while it sucks that they were stuck on the kickoff, so they killed it and got the crown to it as well. I gave it an A minus. A minus. Uh, up next, Elias defeat Bobby Lashley in a ladder match. Uh, this may have been one of the dullest ladder matches I've ever seen in my life. Uh, easily one of the most forgettable ones too. Yeah. Uh, it, it's more like a, a ladder match you would put on Raw, but you forget it actually happened by the end of the show. Or the next break. Or the next break even. Uh, nothing interesting happened. Uh, Elias did did win, but. He actually didn't end up standing tall, and Lashley stole him with the guitar anyway, so... Yeah, that's not a good trend for uh, Raw to continue on a pay onto a pay-per-view. We'll see if he continues after this, though. Uh, this... I mean, the work was fine, but nothing Lashley does interests me right now. Like, nothing. Uh, but I absolutely hate that the result of it matter. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of these guys asked me, anyway. Uh, I ended giving it a D. I put the wrong grades in each match. My bad. That's not good. Uh, uh, up next, Carmel R. Truth defeat Alicia Fox and Jenna Mahal to, in the Mixed Match Challenge Isles to be number 30 in respect to Rumbles or to get to not get number 30 in their second Rumbles. Yeah. But they won Truth to WWE headquarters. Uh, uh, for being kind of a lackluster fit. For being uh, the finish to a very lackluster uh, mix match challenge, uh, it it was fine, I guess. Uh, nothing really great or memorable or standout happened, but nothing truly offensive. Mm -hmm. uh, it it was just there, and uh, pretty much Truth and Carmella got all their stuff in. Yeah, like most of the MMC, it wasn't really good this season, but Truth and Carmella are telling fun, so I'm glad they. I'm glad they won. Yeah. Uh, D plus. Uh, C minus. Uh, up next, the bar defeated the Usos and the New Day to retain the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships. Uh, I I really like this one. To me, I thought this was uh, the unofficial start to the actual pay per view. <laughs> right. Uh, this is this is definitely what should have what should have started and kicked it off on a very high note after the kickoff. Uh, the three teams work very well together. Uh, it probably would have been even better if they had a ladder somewhere involved in there. Uh -huh. uh, like in a ladder match. Uh, but other than that, uh, the three teams work incredibly well together. They have great chemistry. Uh, all of them got their stuff in and the bar retains, which thinking about it now, they actually probably needed. Uh... Yeah, uh, this, yeah, th this was not much, I, much, I, it was really good, fun, uh, and any combination these three teams continue to deliver. You should have our time out. Uh, I give the match an A minus. B. Uh, next, uh, yeah, Br Brian, uh, Braun Strowman defeated Baron Corbin to face Brock at the Rumble and to Drew Corbin. Uh, essentially, this is more of a, a segment than it was a match. Uh, Braun called out uh, members of the Raw roster to take on Corbin since it's a new DQ match. Uh, the members of the Raw that came out were Apollo, for reasons unexplained. Uh, Bobby and Gable, who had past reasons, but they're now tag team champions, thanks Corbin. And Finn Balor, who makes absolute sense. That's Slater. And Slater, who's in the ring, decided to take off his referee shirt. And throw it at Corbin. And throw it at Corbin. So. 
makes uh, sense. Yeah. So two for two. Yeah, so Corbin got beat down with a bunch of chairs. He ends up getting away until Kurt Angle stops him on the ramp, sends him back into the ring, and uh, Braun pins him for the one, two, three. Yeah, uh, it was not so much a match as an angle, but it, in terms of a role, it was a really good angle. With with rolling baby face is finally reuniting, though they're not really rolling for them, but we'll skip that plot for a moment. Yeah. With rolling baby face is finally reuniting, and Corbin getting the ASP he deserves. So it was really nice to get a satisfying payoff for once on Monday night. Yeah. Uh, NA, you know. Yeah, I didn't grade it. Or in the orange I put. NA. Uh, up next, uh, Natalia defeated Ruby Riot and a tape smash. Uh, for, I'll, I'll give Raw one thing over the past month. They've actually done a well enough job building up this week. Mm. Uh, it's pretty much uh, Ruby picking on Natalia, uh, even getting to the point where she's incorporating Natalia's recently dead father into the story. Into the story. Yeah. Uh, and in this match, it, it was a it was actually a, com- a great comeuppance for Natalia. Yeah. Uh, pro- probably not the not that great of literally having her run through the riot squad while fighting off a ruby. I probably would just had Liv and Sarah screw up and then Natalia bumps them both yeah. through one table. Uh, instead of just putting them separately through one yeah. minutes later. Uh, but other than that, I thought it, it, it was the end to actually probably an un- a little bit more of an understated feud in the last downturn overall. Yeah, I- I thought match was solid. I thought it was a little bit long and lethargic for a tables match at times. But that's how I got to feel the moment. But I do, I, I don't have no idea what you do with the Rise squad. Yeah. So I'm here now. Uh, they are far from a dominant team and just got their aces. All of them got their aces in the mind of Tally. Yeah. Also, also, good job on building a ball feud overall. Though they did it around sunglasses and, fat, and decals and fat heads. So that's very impressive. Yes. Ah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly the definition of blood feud, but good job. Good effort on the blood feud part. <laughs> I gave it a B minus. C. Uh, up next, Finn Balor defeated Jurassic Park. Uh, I thought I thought this match was pretty good. Uh, Finn and Drew again worked pretty well together. Uh, uh, essentially, Doff got involved in the match, so he's not necessarily done with Drew and. He's not done with Finn either because they have a match coming up, but thanks to Dolph, uh, Finn was able to get the advantage and hit the coup de grace for the win. Uh, pretty well worked match. Uh, I kind of wanted it to step into the next gear. Didn't necessarily get that, but I thought but I thought it was a fun match. Yeah, this is a good match that I was enjoying, but I wasn't, I did the ending, but I wasn't a fan of the ending and Ziggler's involvement. Uh, and I felt the ending actually took away from the match instead of adding to it. But at least it protected McIntyre, who they reportedly do have big points for. The real positive is though their faces are sh- well, up until this point. Up until they start fighting in the back. Yeah. The real positive were the faces were showing some unity on Raw tonight. <laughs> <laughs> until they decide to fight each other. Yes. <laughs> but, one step was so close, and then two steps backwards on Raw. <laughs> Uh, I give it a B minus. B minus. Uh, up next, Ray Mysterio defeat Randy Orton and Chairs Ash. Uh, I'm I'm gonna come out and say best Chairs match of all time. Uh, Chairs matches don't necessarily have a great track record, but I thought Ray and Randy actually worked with them very well. They they actually created spots off the chairs, and I actually did like the finish of uh, Orton sitting on the chairs. Yeah, and Ray running up and sort of rolling him off into a Roll. into a cradle, cradle yeah. for the win. So yeah. uh, I, I thought they are actually pretty innovative with the chairs, and may, maybe it's not necessarily the worst gimmick you can give somebody. Uh, it doesn't necessarily make much sense, but if you know how to work a chair, if you know how to work a chair, I had no idea what we're trying to say. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, it was nice to see Ray get some revenge and. Uh, and maybe maybe I have to go like the full twelve minutes. Could be a little faster pace in some parts, but yeah, uh, the simulation should work for the match. I gave it a 
B. I gave it a B. B. Up next, uh, Ronda Rousey defeated Nia Jax and retained a Royal Rumble Championship. Uh, I've, I actually thought this match was done pretty well. Uh, Nia's best opponent is literally Ronda Rousey. Uh, it, those two seem to work pretty well together. Uh, Ronda... Ronda does extremely well when, at least better than expected, when someone's not as good as her in the ring, where she's forced to be the one that carries the match. Yeah. Uh, yeah and, and I guess it's kind of amazing for her only being a year into the business, mm -hmm. full-fledged. Uh, but yeah, I thought Nia and Ronda in ring did, wise, did pretty well. The girl her. picks up, it's picked up quick. Yeah. Uh, she's further ahead, I thought she would be. At this point, yeah, Mike Mike still needs work, but yeah, ring wise, yeah, yeah, I put this end up being a very good match, had a good layout, some good drama, and Ronda retained. Uh, Ronda delivered again, and Nia more than held up her end of the deal here, and it was actually my favorite match on the roll side, thanks. Yeah, a roll. <sighs> Uh, with the two, with two other matches that Roll had, this was my favorite one. Believe it or not. Yeah, I think it, was, I think it was my favorite for, one too. For Roll, yeah. You look in the grades. Yeah, it was my favorite one. Yeah. I gave it a B. B. I was just got two of five lives. Parts of Roll, but I don't. Uh, no. Uh, up next, Daniel Bryan defeated AJ Styles to retain the WWE Championship. Uh, uh, my fault. I gave it a B. It's all fair. Uh, hell of a match from Bryan and AJ. Uh, they both worked very well together, and not necessarily. It was a clean win from Brian because it was a roll up, but not necessarily a the cleanest win. I, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Yeah. Uh, they worked for very well. They they did very well in submissions. Uh, AJ pulled out the single leg uh, Boston Crab, which I don't think I've ever seen him pull out before. No. Uh, and the crab was eaten into that as a yeah. finish. Yeah, which was kind, of, which was kind of fun and weird a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but Brian worked very well as a heel, and uh, if they want to do a second one, come Royal Rumble, I'll be all for it. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic match. They played extremely well off of their SmackDown matches. Uh, it had some tremendous callbacks. It was just a case of uh, two excellent wrestlers delivering. AJ's amazing fire baby face, and while Brian's channeling the best of his ROH persona. With the groundwork, the roof was this, and of course, bring back Mr. Small Package. Uh, this was excellent pro wrestling, slowly and smartly built from the start, with everything on a point of purpose. Uh, this was one of WWE's best main roster matches of 2018. Yeah. We'll be saying that again in, in, in two more matches. Uh, I give it an A. A. Uh, up next, Seth Rollins to defeat Dean Ambrose. I mean, Dean Ambrose defeats Seth Rollins to regain the Impulsion yeah. Championship. Uh, it, it's it's maybe a differing opinion than anybody else, but I, I actually kind of liked this match. Uh, it's not necessarily what I was expecting out of Seth and Dean. Uh, it was a little bit more of a slower paced match and kind of built slowly. So uh, I also think it was kind of put in the wrong spot. I don't think it should have gone between AJ and Brian and the woman's TLC later in the show. Yeah. Uh, it probably should it should at least been earlier in the card. I, I, I maybe not maybe not one of the first matches, but probably somewhere in the middle of the pack. Pro probably slightly before AJ and Brian. Mm -hmm. Uh but still I thought they actually did a great job of storytelling. Uh, there were nice callbacks to uh, Seth hurting his leg. Uh, even more callbacks to Dean Turning on the shield and Dean almost trying to go Seth into doing the fist shield bump. fist bump. Yeah. Uh, and I thought Dean was. I think that it was also smart to give Dean the bell at this point because he literally just turned heel. It, it, it kind of would have been lackluster if he didn't at least win. So I thought I thought it was a good call. I'm half with him. I uh, I thought that I didn't hate as much as. San Jose did clearly. Yeah. Uh, maybe not what I was expecting, but I thought it was still good. I thought the storyline, uh, the storyline, the story in the match was great or, or even excellent at times. That the wrestle that we know Seth and Dean can do together 
was kind of pushed back though. Yeah. Which is why there's a much hole in my brain to where it's at. Because I, they did spend weeks making it personal too. He, blew, he blew up. He didn't blow up the shield. As I put, <laughs> he, he broke up the shield. Not blow well. That might make him a terrorist. Uh, he did it on the night that Roman announces leukemia diagnosis, and Seth was mentioning Roman at the end of the match. Yeah. Saying this was for Roman and all the kids. And they used that for heat, so I think it was a great storytelling match, but the warp, they warped it the wrong way mm. in terms of the wrestling. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, like, they, I, the fans wanted a brawl, they, I think, feel the hate more, and they wanted those feelings they set hand the match to spill over into the match itself. So I said, it was it was a great storytelling match with an ordinary wrestle match. Yeah. That broke out, if that makes sense. Uh, so the, I think the wrestle is not what anybody was expecting, not the story. Uh, and the fans, the live fans, unfortunately, got to take into account, though. With the, with the greens, mm -hmm. they were they were quiet for a large portion, and then even chained down was it was boring. Uh, I'm not taking that part into my green. Yeah, place right now. It wasn't bad. They did work hard, and the story time was great. I just thought the wrestle came off a little bit bland and heatless. I gave it a B minus. C. And the main event, Oscar defeated Becky Lynch and Charlotte to win the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh. I really mm. like this match. My favorite match of the night. Mm. Uh, the three ladies worked the TLC gimmick pretty well. I, and I came into it thinking that we probably would get a better just straight up triple threat match between the three. Mm. Uh, and they both, on all three of them, blew me away with what they did with old tables, ladders, and chairs. Uh, I'm actually surprised we actually had women that actually broke the tables. Yeah, I yeah. know. Which is, which is relatively... A new thing, I, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and also, some of those spots look in incredibly dangerous and painful. Like Becky straight up landing on Charlotte's stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, Oscar was smart enough to get out of there. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte was a trooper today too. She she pretty much took the best shots in the match. Uh, and it also did surprise me that Oscar actually came away with the win. Uh, it, it, it had kind of been in the back of my mind. But I didn't necessarily think they were going to go that way. I thought they were going to build to it with another rematch of her and Charlotte at Mania. Uh, but still, I'm I'm very happy with the result. I'm very and I'm very happy with the match. Yeah, uh, I'm not always a fan of running, but this made perfect sense. Just sort of Rousey around his issues with uh, Becky and Charlotte. The match itself was awesome, crazy, and brutal in the right ways. With everyone playing a role to stream well, stream well. Uh, Oscar and Becky pulling great. Performances like Pat said, it was a really tremendous performance for Charlotte, though. Uh, the match just sort of progressed everyone along uh, the Ronda Sharp Becky dynamic is more interesting now. And Oscar's not a champion, it'll bring things up on the SmackDown side. Yeah. Uh, they kept a good pace, laid out the big spots well, had a good season of who could win, and they kept the crowd on tight time. I felt going with the late, I felt going that the Leeds main event was a red call. And uh, they most certainly delivered here. Yeah. Uh, A plus. A plus. Overall. Uh, overall, I gave the show an A. I I was actually presently surprised with the show. Mm -hmm. uh, there were parts where I, where I didn't care about much, but I thought the parts that I really did care about, like the women's triple threat, AJ and Brian, uh, even a little bit of Seth and Dean, I'll I'll give them a, a little bit of credit. Even though I think I liked a, a lot more matches than that one. Uh, I, I think all of them, a lot of it progressed really well. Uh, I thought I think WWE's actually been on a strong roll with their pay per views towards the end of the year. Yeah, like uh, August on Mice Crown Jewel, like yeah. SummerSlam on. Uh, so hopefully with this the uh, shake up thing that's happening tomorrow night. But well, when we shake up, we only superstar shake up. We have no idea what's being shake up. Yeah, on roll. It's just yeah. Vince is in, has announced that he's going to be at Raw and he's going to shake things up. To so, me, that means superstar shake up. Yeah, that's what I do. Who, who knows what that actually means? Right, we we think we have no details. Because that. Dota, we can go back on meanings with words with uh, pretty much the sneeze of Vince McMahon. And it could just be a thing of Vin of Roll sucking, but for the most part, deliver on paper. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, 
<laughs> but pretty much, I recommend the pay-per-view. It was excellent. Yeah, uh, A for me as well. Uh, it delivered three great matches and two of the main roster's best efforts this year. Yeah. Uh, there were parts of the card that were uneven and blew it. I mean, it was a 12-match card, so you're bound to get that. Yeah. Uh, but the Cruiserweights delivered as to the SmackDown tag and the Royal Women's title match and the Cheers match. The Braun angle, all things considered, also came off very well. Uh, you know, they got half. Oh, I went for Kurt Angle, too. He has a right to be paid. He did return. I, yeah. oh, no, I forgot to mention that guy. It's on screen. Yeah. Uh, so that that actually makes sense. Uh, and also, I should be pissed at Corbin. Mm -hmm. So I want Braun Finn Heath. Uh, 4 out of 7. I don't pay a roll. That's like a third. That's like a third. Yeah, like a 37%. Uh, no, I'm not even 37. 50. 50%. Yeah. Almost. Good job, bro. Uh, you got 50, you got some 50% right. Uh, yeah. yeah. We'd like to see the Revival out there. Right. To show that they're not pushovers. Revival. And you can get them, have them get heat later, but. Revival over Bobby and Gable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then there were things like the, the ladder mash. Not under deliver. The, well, not under deliver, that just felt flat. Uh, the tables might have felt flat a little bit because it was a little long. And the panel had to feel about the Seth. Like I said, for the under delivered one wrestle them and not the story tell. Yeah. Uh, but even with those fools, it was a great show with for my recommendations, Cedric and Buddy, AJ and Daniel and uh Oscar Becky Charlotte. Yeah. Same here. And uh New Day New Day Bar Mooses for my recommendations, yeah. Uh but now do it for this, the last pay per view of yep. twenty eighteen. And it only made sense that after months of ties and months of only losing by one or two months of our series take and take over LA or World Games rather, that I finally won in a blowout by, by one. one. <laughs> well, because he was so you were, you were bound to get one. You were bound yeah. to get one. So, we got time. Yes. Let me pull up the Slammer 1996 card that you yes. are going to, that we will be doing on Friday, right? For this one. Yeah. All right, on Friday. Also, on Wednesday will be your vengeance, unforgiven, at Monday Night Work Review, sir. Yeah. First. Uh, but, pull up the WCWs. I don't know, no, 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 that's, that's all the size. This is going to be a stunning car in a bit. Is it, Pat? Oh, yeah. Well, you don't trust me? Well, I want to get him some of WCW, because, you know, end of the year WCW makes sense. How? End of the year WCW, it makes sense. Well, Not maybe. sure how that makes sense, but whatever. Just go look. Starcade. Starcade happened in December, Pat. Wait, though. So this is Slim Brewery. Uh. <laughs> I'm actually interested to see what this pair looks like. So am I. <laughs> oh, yeah. How good. Oh good! It, oh good! It's got a shit rating. No, it doesn't. It's got three point five six on case match on it. Out of ten, they have two recommended. Oh no, three recommended matches at least. Wait! Oh my damn! Oh my god! Excuse, excuse me a little bit. Okay, we're back with this fifteen match card. You're yeah. interested. It's the Lord of Ring Tag Team Tournament. It's a random tag teams. Book of Team Road Warrior Animal versus Lex Luger and Road Warrior Hulk. Hot damn. What's on Booker T and the Red Warriors and like the Blue they, they have very, very odd partners. The Public Enemy versus Chris Benoit and the Taskmaster. Chris Benoit is on the blues end. They didn't mean to spoil that for you. That's just wrong. Yeah. Rich Steiner and the Bowie Man versus Sergeant Craig Pittman and Scott Steiner. <laughs> Jim Duggan and VK Wall Street versus the Blue Bloods. Earl Robert Eaton and Dick Slayer. Versus Alex Ray and Disco Inferno. Diamond Dallas Hayes with Barbarian versus Hugh Morris and Ming. And by the way, there is not a match above seven minutes so far, you said. Fire and Ice versus Big Bubba and Stevie Ray. Still not above seven minutes. This sounds really good, though. Randy Savage and Ric Flair versus Arn Anderson and Guerrero. Unfortunately, there's mm -hmm. only four minutes. Does that sound really good, though? It does sound really good. Dean Malenko versus Brian Armstrong for the Cruiserweight title match. Okay. Dick Slayer and Earl Robert E versus Jim Duggan and VK Wall Street. The Polygamy versus Randy Sapp. 
It's not a brick floor. Okay. Uh, the Dom Yashay's Barbarian versus Rick Steiner and the Booty Man. This sounds good. Conan versus Jushin Thunder Liger for the United States. Yeah, title. that sounds good. The Battle Bowl Battle, Battle Royal. With all the winners on one of the semifinal tie matches for the Lord of the Ring. And the main event, the Giant versus Sting. That sounds good. It can be. So there's only like three matches above seven minutes. So you should be done sweeping in no time, is what you're saying? No. It means there's going to be a lot of short matches. Well, I figure it fit the theme. Because TLC had 12 matches. Okay. And I wanted a pay per view to bring 10 matches for you. Because you said the TLC car was a lot of matches, so I gave you one for the theme. Because I love you. I mean, it might be a good card. You don't know. There's like three short matches out of 15. It's a 3.56 <laughs> rating out of 10 on, K on cagematch.net. With 31 votes. But look at that. Most of the votes are three. So actually, the average is better than that. Three. Aha. Uh -huh. Sorry. Well, was, I got that to look forward to on Thursday. It was even this for Great like, American Bash 96. Like when El Sire's Powerbomb. Yeah, why didn't you give me that one? Because I believe that that card also has. Ray's Dean, debut. Yeah, it's. Ray's is it Dean and Ray? Yeah. Yeah, at least could have had that. Yeah, it was between that and that. But I figured, you know what? It, I, I have faith in winning this favor. I was like, it's about time to give you something big. I give you a lot of good ones a lot of times. Only time. It's one bad pay per view. Uh, well, I'll go for this. Uh, I'm. Oh, you're during it. Uh, and we'll be back on Wednesday with our other reviews. See you then. Say that.